impact as our our department, right? Our technology department or, or the superintendent's office. Correct. Okay. Um, communication. I have a few items that I would uh, like to check off. First of all, I think it's important acknowledging um, express our appreciation to Dr. Kilborn and to the directors for all the work they've done in leading this organization and also to those who are part of our organization and have worked so hard. We've seen many articles. Michelle has sent us some communication about some things that have been out there and we have been visible during this and I know that everyone has been working very hard. It's a difficult time but we're almost through. Um, I would like to remind those who have not returned their completed uh, district superintendent's evaluation form to please do so. Michelle is the chairman of that committee and she would like Deb to get them together for her so that she can start planning the review of those um, evaluations. Also, um, this month is the month I am supposed to uh, appoint a nominating committee for officers for next year. I'm not prepared to do that at this point, but I would ask those of you who are interested in being an officer to please contact me and let me know before the May meeting, and then I will appoint a, uh, a committee from those members who are not interested. I just have no idea this year what the level of interest is. It's a new year. We got a dynamic leader. It'd be great to be the head of the group. So uh, everybody get in line if you would like. And I know many of you have not done it in the past, but certainly have been there long enough to be able to lead us. So please do that. Let me know. And then in May, I will appoint a committee. Um, I just ask that during this meeting, when we have a motion in a second that you, I move and say your name, Doreen, whatever it be, so that Deb can clearly uh, see who's making a motion and uh, having a second. So is there other, any other communication that we need to carry on? No? Okay, so then we will go to the district superintendent's report. Okay, so we have a few items to go through. Um, Number one is you'll find a board resolution regarding continued payment for hourly employees during COVID-19. Um, that's in practice as our hour employees are on call. Um, but also in, the, in light of the fact that we continue to receive monies from the districts coming in and as they continue to receive monies from the state, we're asked to continue to employ people. Um, it offsets what we don't have in terms of unemployment insurance and maintains the benefit structure for them. So I had mentioned that in some earlier communications with the board and that's the resolution you'll find today. Um, also, I'm going to propose right now that we postpone our continued mission and vision work just because it's hard to kind of digest that and engage in conversation in this format. So I'd ask you to continue with our existing mission and vision until such time we're physically with each other again. Capital project. The window project is being postponed again. Uh, same capital are allowed in schools, but they have to be tied to safety and health. Um, and at this time, we're uh, moving forward with postponing that. Just want to check with Charlie. Were there any changes to that, Charlie, or that's still where we are, correct? That is where we are. You got it. Okay. Um, regarding uh, the budget, the New York State budget was sent out. Um, Earlier this week, I did, earlier last week, I did uh, write to you as a board about it. It's not really looking great for schools right now. Um, what really happened was that stimulus money came through from the federal government. And instead of it being added to the state's budget, the governor elected to remove $1.1 billion out of the state budget and fill the hole with the federal money. So what's happened is, is there has been no increase in funding to our schools and built into that proposal is an opportunity on four different occasions throughout the year for the governor to do a look back. If revenues that the state was anticipating aren't coming in at an appropriate level, they can make proposals to further cuts to the education budget. I have been in conversations with local uh, assembly, uh, local senators, um, local governance, they don't anticipate a lot of leverage at the state legislative level to 
offset any further proposals for reductions that the governor might make. There is some talk about uh, another education stimulus package coming through the federal government to schools, but to the level that that becomes additional money to our area or to any schools in New York State is still questionable. So we'll continue to keep you informed because of course, mm -hmm. though we don't receive those direct funds, um, that will impact what our component districts are able to do um, regarding their budgeting in general and services and programming for children. So we'll keep you in the loop on that. Um, the BOCES administrative budget is up for vote in our districts on April 28th. That does not carry significant increases. Um, and it's not the same as a program budget. So we're moving through with that vote at the among all the districts in the region. Our program budgets could see fluctuations. That's where, depending on the district's um, need for services, change in service needs as a result of the budget and change in finances, we can see changes in our program budgets, um, which we're pretty used to in a BOCES. The commitments are due early May. I believe that's correct, right, Charlie? And um, so we might see changes in what people are requesting for BOCES services. In some cases, it could be more because they'll have to share services versus employing additional people within their home districts. And in some cases that might be less. So we'll continue to keep you in the loop as we learn more from the districts about what they think they're going to do. Um, all of it's a little tenuous right now because budget approvals among component districts are being pushed back into June because the governor has pushed off budget votes until early June and also because the governor will have done his first look back in May. So there could be proposed cuts then, or you might find we started a certain level of service. And then in the middle of the year, the governor will cut the school district's budgets. And that will of course have like a bit of a boomerang effect with us. So we'll continue to keep you updated on the fiscal circumstances. We work very closely with the superintendents in this region. We're in communication multiple times a week and this is one of the big uh, discussions we're currently having. Um, COVID-19 related updates. Uh, we are offering a prorated paycheck. So we have town month employees. Typically there are teachers and teachers assistants who elect to have some of their money from each of their paychecks set aside so that their last paycheck in June is a larger sum and that money carries them through the summer because recall that they're not 12 month employees, they're 10 month employees. So some people refer that to as the multi check or the big check. We recognize that uh, many of our families have been um, negatively impacted as a result of COVID-19. Um, there are many layoffs. So we're offering an opportunity for those employees to access some of their set aside funds earlier should they have an undue financial hardship that's related to COVID-19. Um, and this is a one-time offer. So uh, we were able to put that together and then information was released out yesterday to our employees as a way to assist them during this time. Additionally, um, we've been doing a lot of work in instruction. So the governor announces the closures in two week increments. And as you know, our closures have been extended until April 29, well, April 30. And at that time, we'll find out, you know, if we're going to be closed for yet another two weeks. So we're shifting from more supplemental instruction to more direct and indirect remote instruction. So during the first phase of two week closures, children were sent home largely with like paper packets of work to do and complete at home. Um, and we are beginning to shift that into more online environments. Some of that is in real time, like we're having right now, where a teacher can load up a classroom or provide, let's say, speech therapy to a child over the internet. And in other cases, they're in um, online kind of like repositories where assignments can be left, children can pull their assignments and complete them, return them electronically, and teachers can comment. So we're seeing more of that shift as appropriate. We recognize with some of our younger students and depending on the ability level of our different students that um, there might be other modalities that are more appropriate to individuals and our teachers are working through that. In an effort to support the districts and their understanding of that, Chris Hill and his group have put together um, a document that explains for every single program like Bridges, MSA, Career and Tech, P-Tech, 
what was done in the first phase and what the transition is now. Um, so the districts know what to expect from BOCES programming. And I was very appreciative to see that they were doing that. Um, I was asked to explain some of this in an interview. So there was a TV interview that I did like two days ago via Zoom, which was interesting <laughs> to do a Zoom interview um, that went well. And one of our local teachers was celebrated and I'm trying to, I wrote her name down. Of course, now I'm trying to read through her name. Uh, Jennifer Maynard, she's uh, located in Westmoreland and she was celebrated for her contributions uh, to her students and was featured um, also on the news. So good, good news for BOCES out there, um, which is always appreciated. Also in line with instruction, an area of challenge that we're going to have to figure out and we do not have answers to right now, will have to do with um, career and technical hours. So some of our programs require a certain amount of hours. Cosmetology is one. Um, and is it nursing? It's not nursing, it's a, uh, yeah. That's the, what is the other one, Chris though? What's the name of the actual program? Chris is muted still. He has a problem with his mute button. It's been an ongoing issue with Chris. <laughs> <laughs> the, the certified nurse assistant program is the one that, that requires hours. Certified nurse assistant and cosmetology are the two that have required hours. So um, across the state, BOCES are trying to figure out how do we accommodate the required hours children need in order to gain their licensure in those areas. Um, the state education department is working with the Office of Professions and we're looking for further guidance. So um, that's kind of a nebulous territory right now still. Um, in addition to that, we're starting to talk about summer and this is all of the component school districts. We recognize that at the beginning of next year, children may be coming to us with some gaps in their learning um, that we're going to have to help them with. And what better opportunities might be available to them to come in and do some work in the summer, which might mean that our summer school may look differently. And we're also looking at how can technology assist where families may want to actually get out of their houses and go places in the summer if possible and not want to have to have their kids come into a campus to a school program. So um, Mr. Morris has been great. He and Ann Turner and Chris Hill have been working together to think about ways to provide summer um, instruction and supports for children in different um, modalities so that children can access it. So we're working with the component superintendents on that to see what kind of things we can do for children uh, for the remainder of this year, for the summer and for early fall. So that's an ongoing instructional discussion that we're having throughout the region. Um, and also on um, some good news, uh, as you are aware that uh, schools in our area are required to continue to feed children. And I think that's kind of a joyous requirement, right? We always want our children well fed. Um, and as you know, Oneida Herkimer Madison BOCES has an excellent food service program that supports 14 school districts. Charlie pulled together some data for me. And so far we have served 50,000 breakfasts and 50,000 lunches. So that's something to celebrate right there, isn't it? Isn't that wonderful? Um, so that is it for the superintendent updates. So I'm going to mute myself now, Elaine. Okay, thank you, Dr. Kilber. Uh, the next item is approval of minutes of our regular meeting, with it, which was March 11th. May I have a motion, please? I'll so moved, move, Michelle. Oh. Okay, we have a motion. Do we have a second? I'll second if I'm not first. <laughs> okay, we have a motion and we have a second. Do you have that, Deb? Yes. In favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Thank you. The next is the approval of the minutes of the annual meeting, which was April 1st. May I have a motion, please? Make a motion, Yvonne. Make a motion. Oops, second, Gary. Okay, we have a motion and we have a second. All in favor, please? Aye. 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 Madam President? Aye. Yes. Madam President, Gary Portelli? Yes. Would, point of information, would you please state for the recording that there is a quorum present? I think you took, um, you took attendance, I, did you not? I, I, I know that Dr. Kilber, 
I know that Dr. Kilburn took uh, yeah. a head count. Okay. Well, Deb, would you add that to the minutes, please, that we have a quorum for this meeting? Thank you. Thank you so much. Okay. The next is approval of the consent agenda. And just for informational purposes, as usual, we have the financial report. We have all the personnel appointments, both instructional and non-instructional. We have three action items. One is the authorization for the paid time off, which Trish talked about. Uh, we have an award for the elementary science kits. Um, and I think they had bid with 15 different vendors. So they've been thoroughly um, looked at and those are there for approval. And I think that's all we have for the consent agenda. Charlie, do you have anything you'd like to say about the financial reports? No, things are continuing. Uh, the schools are continuing to pay us. So, you know, all is in good shape financially through June 30th, as long as we continue on this path. Okay, great. So therefore, I would like an emo a motion for the consent agenda, please. So moved, Michelle. Move Second, Gary. Okay, we have a motion and a second. All in favor, please. Yes. Aye. 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 Okay. Motion carried. Uh, I did speak to you about the nominating committee. I don't know if all of you, were, you, know, you probably were, but uh, please, those of you who are interested in an officership, please let me know during the next month and at the May meeting, I will appoint a nominating committee uh, of people who are, are not interested. So um, I'm looking forward to hearing from many of you. Uh, I guess we don't have any old business, but we do have an executive session. And uh, you can see we have an executive session for um, employment history and collective and negotiations. So I would like a motion to go into executive session. So moved, Griff. And a second, please. I'll second, John Griffin. Okay, we have a motion and a second. We are now in executive session. Dr. Kilburn, you're muted. All right, so Scott, you're going to break us out into the other room, and then I'm going to call you on my phone when we need to come back out. Will you stop recording right now? Yep, I'm going to stop recording right now for executive session. All right, wish me luck. This said leave the breakout session. Yeah. Yep. Oh, there is? Yes. Okay. Up in the right-hand corner. Wow. On the phone. Great. Oh, okay. The participants on the phone won't be back for 45 seconds. Okay. Oh, there's one right now, and there's another one. This is exciting. Yeah. This is kind of cool. <laughs> they should all, one of them is not back yet. Can I ask who we have on the phone? Yes. And Gary, is that you in addition to Russ? Oh, we got all three. Be back now. Okay, I think we have everyone back. Okay, I guess we're back in business. We are now out of executive session and returning to our um, main meeting. Um, I think we have a motion to approve. Deb, would you a resolution read? to read, correct. So Deb, do you have a copy of the resolution to read into the record? Yes, I do, Dr. Kilburn. Can you go ahead and read it? Resolution request for defense and indemnification, whereas the BOCES has received a letter dated March 9th, 2020 from an employee requesting defense and indemnification in connection with an appearance ticket issued to the employee as a result of an alleged violation of New York State Penal Law Section 260.10 and whereas in support of the employee's request for defense and indemnification, the employee attached a copy of the appearance ticket, and whereas the BOCES has reviewed the information provided by the employee in support of the employee's request. Therefore, it is resolved, the employee's request for defense and indemnification is denied because there are no statutory contractual or legal grounds 
upon which the request defense and indemnification could lawfully be provided. The district superintendent or her designee is directed to notify the employee of this determination. Okay, fine. If everyone would unmute their phone so we can vote, I would entertain a motion. So move. I'm sorry. I didn't, I didn't get that. I'm sorry, Mrs. Favell. Okay. Who made the motion, Doreen? Yes. And Russ, you seconded it? Yes. Yeah. Okay, thank you. Okay, we have the motion has been moved and seconded. All in favor, please. Aye. 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 Anyone opposed? Okay, I guess we've gotten our business done. This is one of the first meetings we've ever had. I don't know, we're really getting good. We're getting really talented with all this stuff. So um, I thank everyone very much for doing this. Hope maybe in May. I don't know where to go that far. <laughs> we'll probably do this again in May, I would think. I don't know. But yeah, we'll probably. see. And thank you, Trish, for keeping us up on what's going on. We appreciate that. And thank the rest of you who are doing so much to keep us going and keeping our children safe. Okay, we are adjourned. Stay safe. Yep. 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 yep.